Hello, how are you? My name is John Bergman and I work and live in Brooklyn and I thought maybe you would like a visit to my studio, a virtual visit. And you can see where I make my work and where I try and come up with ideas and what it's like to be an artist. So if you'd like to join me, keep watching. So this is my studio and it's in Greenpoint in Brooklyn. And I've been working from this studio for a couple of years now and I like it very, very much. And it's just me in here, which is good. It's nice and quiet most of the time. And I've got space for painting and drawing and thinking and napping, which are all very important parts of my process. So we're here now in the painting studio. Let me, let me show you what it looks like. You can see some unfinished work here. This is a, can you guess what this is? Can you guess what this is gonna be? Hmm, that's right, it's a taco. So I'm gonna paint this pizza slice and it just needs finishing touches of some eyeballs and maybe a nice smile. Maybe we'll do that later. Um, you can see some of the spray paint that I use and some of the acrylic paint. I like to use whatever I can. Oh, look, here is a small pizza slice. Uh, are you my mummy? So that is the small slice and the big slice. When I um, order a pizza, I like to go for the big slice. The biggest slice is always the best, remember that. Um, sadly, this is cardboard. Hmm. And when I'm in my studio, I like to try out using different materials, coming up with different ideas, using different things. So about a year or two ago, I started using spray paint. I never really used that before. So you can see some of my new paintings like this one behind me is all using spray paint no brushes it's kind of strange for me because i'm very used to drawing and touching the paper with a pen or a crayon or a sharpie or whatever i've got or a brush but when you use spray paint you kind of don't touch the surface at all you just hover above it but i always like to try uh, making things in different ways like check this out i was feeling quite lonely in the lockdown, so I made some friends to hang out with me. And these were made just by tearing the paper. So, hello. Hello, hello, hello. So, again, no drawing or mark making necessarily, but you can create using anything you want. You can create using paper. Let me show you how I made one of these guys. First of all, you need a piece of paper. Oh, that's, that's one that's already been made. Let's have a look. And that one's already been made. Okay, you need a piece of paper that you haven't already used. There must be one under, no. All right, hold on. All right, I've got a piece of paper. So, very, very easy, very, very fun. Let's put the camera down. All right, so you've got a piece of paper. And it doesn't matter what size or color or anything it is. And what I like to do, is just not think of anything and just kind of pinch the paper and tear the paper like this. So I don't want to tear it all the way, I'm just going to tear it a little bit. And to me, it already looks like a mouth. It might not look like that to you. It might not look like it yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some eyes above it and you can use anything you want. I'm just going to use this pen just for quickness. I'm going to draw a circle. And then I'm going to draw another circle. And then I'm going to put some coloured in circles in the middle of those circles to create eyes. So, like that. Like that. And now we have a little character. It's a little bit like a bird. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Ah. 
And for me, this is like really exciting because I would never be able to draw such a weird shape because I'd be thinking too much about the shape I was drawing. But with this, I could just tear it without thinking and something else happens. And that might give me an idea for a drawing later on or for a character or for a painting. So experimenting and not knowing what you're doing is really part of, uh, a really important part of my process. And it's a really good way of doing something you've not done before. Hey, look, it looks like it's eating a strawberry from my shirt. Can you see that from my hoodie? Mmm, I've been eating strawberries. And I think that's a pear. So yeah, you can have a lot of fun with these guys. Um, now, if you had it like that and you want to make it into even more of a character, we could just tear around the head to give it more, more of a head rather than a, a rectangle from the paper. So I'm just tearing it. Just sort of tearing around it, really, trying to avoid cutting into the mouth. All right, maybe we'll just tear a little bit off there. And we have a fun little, I think it looks a bit like a cat. Maybe we'll give it a nose. Give it a little nose like that. See, we drew the nose here. And let's give it some whiskers. Now we have a little cat. I did not know we were gonna make a cat when we started that, but there we go. And this cat loves pizza. Oh yes, nom, 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 nom. And there you go. And that is how I made some of those paper torn pieces. This isn't really part of the tour, but I thought you guys would be interested to see. Okay, it's very easy to make. And you can use old paper, you can recycle some paper, old magazines, newspapers, you can use anything for this found some shiny paper so I used the shiny paper I made some funny I think this is the self-portrait of me what do you reckon he looks kind of worried and anxious do we look the same Maybe. so that's how I made these guys over here and here are some more down here at the bottom there. Just playing around, just playing around, having fun. Here's something I made a little while ago by cutting uh, a, a shape off the cereal box and I stuck an eyeball on it. It's um, some sort of O, like a Cheerio, but not quite. I thought it was just a, it would make a cool little character. So I could do it like that. I'll just put that back on the wall. Like that. You can see some of my other uh, works here. This is a spray paint painting. Shh, shh. Very simple shapes, a triangle, circle, a semicircle. A lot of my characters are made out of very simple shapes. This is a ink drawing. So just with an ink pen and again, it might look a bit complicated, but actually they're very simple shapes. And you just start in one place and keep going and keep going and then it gets busier and busier. I did another piece like that over here. These are all different characters and you can maybe spot another pizza slice in there. Maybe a ghost. What else can you see? So I like drawing and painting, but I also like trying to occasionally make stuff in three dimensions. Um, so here's a little guy that I made a while ago. Oh, hello. It's a hot dog. And it's made out of paper mache. Now I bet some of you guys have done paper mache stuff before, but you blow up a balloon you see it's hollow inside. You blow up a balloon and then you dip some paper in white glue and then you wrap it around the balloon. 
and um, let it dry and then you can pop the balloon and then paint the object and, and then you've got a thing. So you can probably see the little strips of paper on there. And what I love about cutting stuff out or making stuff in 3D is that kind of brings the character into the world. We can sort of interact directly with it. That's why I like making stuff out of cardboard as well. Cause you can sort of do the same trick. I'm gonna put the hot dog down for a second. Oh no, don't let me go. And uh, show you some other 3D stuff that I've done. This has been laser cut and it's been professionally made. You can probably see it's made out of wood. So, but that's quite, quite fun. And um, I bought myself something to cut foam with and I made, I don't know if you can see it, a slice of toast up there. And I put some eyes on it, of course. But I haven't put anything on my toast yet. Should I put peanut butter on my toast? Should I put jam on my toast? Should I put peanut butter and Oh, sorry, not jam. Jelly. That's what you guys would call it. I'm from Britain, so I, I would say jam. But peanut butter and jelly, right? It's quite a tasty treat. Here is another foam character that I made. It's a bit bigger. Oh, hello. Nice to see you. How are you all? Are you enjoying this virtual book fair? It's a shame we can't all be together, but this is a nice treat anyway, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, maybe, um, yeah, maybe I spend too much time alone in here, who knows. So that is the painting side of the studio. And here are some very new paintings that I've been making with spray paint. And, oh, that one doesn't look very happy, does he? Very interested in sort of showing different emotions in the characters. That one's a bit grumpy as well. Here you can see some of my drawings and things. And some other experiments from a while ago. This wasn't my idea. But it was a good idea, so I borrowed it. That happens a lot in art. Someone will have an idea, and another artist will see the idea and be inspired by it. And it will give them an idea, and then they'll go and make something. And that... Thing that they make might give another artist an idea and that's kind of what we do that's what artists do so i'm hope that maybe you might see some of these things in my studio it might inspire you it might give you an idea you might think i would like to make a paper mache hot dog or i would like to make a paper mache something else and then you have that idea you will share it and someone else might be inspired and that's just the way it goes and that's super exciting just gonna have a quick sip of coffee So now we're coming into the second section of my studio, which is the office side. So behind me, you can probably see a computer and a kettle, very important. And even more important, some sort of uh, vacuum cleaner. And this um, side of the studio is where I sit at the computer and do more boring computer things. Let's check it out. So very importantly, um, over here is a poster of my ABCs. It's very important to know your ABCs. Um, you need all those letters if you're gonna go into business. And here are some artworks of people that have visited my studio and made a little drawing for me. So I like to put them on this wall. Hi, John. Hello. Hi, John. Hello. Now I'm sat at my desk. And this is, yeah, like I was saying, where I spend a lot of time. And I sit here and I try and think of funny ideas. And I reply to emails. Oh, I'm replying to an email. And I very occasionally send invoices. It's not very exciting. But, hey, you got to do it. And uh, I look out the window 
So we've uh, opened my eyes. And I do a lot of drawing, actually, in something called a sketchbook. I bet you guys have got a sketchbook. So in my sketchbook, I'll do drawings, and I'll just use a pen, or two pens, or three pens. And you can see, I just like to do little drawings. And what I might do is scan these into my computer. And that's how I create the artwork for a lot of my books. I wonder if I've got an example of that lying around. Hold on. Had a little route around. I found an old sketchbook. Uh, this was from February 2019. So I'll show you some of the pictures. So these are drawings straight into the sketchbook. You can see here there are a lot of bodies. And what I can show you is how this became a page in my book. Everybody has a body which is here oh yes so if we look at that sketchbook drawing check it out there it is in the book so you can see like this drawing here is exactly the same as the drawing there this is a character holding something what could they be holding I'm not sure Let's find it in the book. They're holding on to something. They're floating away. Oh, they're floating away. Oh, they're holding some balloons. So you can see, I might do the drawing a few times before I really get the one I like. Sometimes I draw it many times and I go back to the very first drawing. And that's just part of the process. But there you go, you can see the drawing and the final image in the book. And before, before I even create the final artwork for the book, I have to work out what's gonna be in the book. So sometimes I draw little squares like this. I'm gonna show you. So this is my plan for the book. And these, this represents the spread of pages. Everybody has a Everybody has uh, everybody. Uh, I don't even write the text very well. I have it in my head, or I might have already written it out. Everybody has a body. Everybody. So I'm trying to work out the opening spread of the book, which I know the words are going to be everybody has a body. So he here are the quick little ideas. And then if we look at the, if we look at the book, Let's see what, how it ended up. Oh, everybody, hello, has a body. Oh, there's a body. So you can see, I think it's a bit like this idea. We have all the heads and all the bodies. That's kind of how you do it. And then that's how you work out each spread. You want to work out what you want to say, what you want to show, and how those two things work together. And you just work them out, work them out, do a little sketch, see what feels right, and then put it together. And there's a lot of back and forth. Here are some more little sketches. So we can see here is a sketch of someone in the football goal and the soccer goal and the big pair of legs kicking. See, a couple of sketches of that. And then when we look in the book, Here's the final spread. So you can see the big pair of legs and they're kicking and they're shooting to score a goal and the goalkeeper's jumping, trying to save it. And that person kicking the ball is very tall and the person in the goal is wide. That for me is one of the most amazing, brilliant things about making art and thinking creatively is that you can have a very simple idea. You can make a very simple doodle, a little sketch and eventually, with a bit of work and time, it can become something. It can become a book. It could become a t-shirt. It could become a painting. It could become a poster. Um, it could become a sticker. Don't eat stickers. It can become anything. In fact, it's up to you what it could become. And you're only really limited by your imagination. 
So that is, I find endlessly exciting about drawing because every time I do a drawing, I think, wow, who knows what this thing will ultimately become. Do you want to meet my monkey? Okay, hold on. So drawing in the sketchbook or on just bits of paper and I take those drawings and I turn them into different things. I'll show you some other applications of my drawings is that sometimes they get turned into things like postcards or key rings. That's a little sleeping bear. What other key rings do we have? There's a little character. So that started off as a drawing in my sketchbook that looked just like that. And then it became a keyring. Magical, isn't it magical? Of course you can make these things yourself. Um, if you've got cardboard and some paint, and some googly eyes, you can cut out, cut them out and you can buy um, a little badge back, a little pin, so you can Wear that as a badge. I made lots of these for fun. Check that out. It's a fried egg. Or a sandwich. It's a really fun way to make some badges or brooches or whatever it is you want to call them. And they make lovely gifts. This is a matzo ball soup. Do you like matzo ball soup? I like matzo ball soup. Clay set. So you can make some little characters like mine. Uh, bags. Phone cases. There's another fried egg. More bags, more stuff. So much stuff. Let me know if anyone wants any stuff. Gotta get rid of all my stuff. Oh, there's another hot dog. Oh, just, uh, Talking of um, stuff that I've made, check this out. This is made for the Brooklyn Museum. Hooray, the Brooklyn Museum. Isn't it beautiful? It's a bag to put your pizza slices in. So you don't need a pizza box. You can just put them straight into the bag. Isn't that amazing? I totally recommend you do that. Um, and then you could just put it on your hat like this. And then you could just eat the pizza, like put your head in, nom, 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 like that. Anyway, that's great. I made um, a bunch of different things for the Brooklyn Museum with my pizza characters, like t-shirt here. Very proud, very proud to work at the Brooklyn Museum and the poster and there's lots of goodies. So if you want to support the museum and get some pizza stuff, you know where to look. Well, I hope you've enjoyed your brief visit into my world and my studio. I hope it's given you some ideas of things you can make and do, inspiration. And I hope uh, you feel free to make whatever you want and have fun making, because I really believe the more fun you have creating stuff, probably the better the thing you're gonna create. That fun has an energy and it goes into the work. And hopefully when someone looks at your work, they'll have some of that fun energy from you absorb into them and uh, and then they'll pass it on. Well, see you hopefully next time in real life, in the real world. But until then, take care of yourself, take care of your loved ones and um, keep reading, keep writing, keep drawing, keep creating and I'll see you again. Thanks for visiting. Bye. 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 Nice to see you. Bye. Bye. Oh, don't leave. Don't leave me. I'm so lonely. Well, it was very nice meeting you. Goodbye now. I said goodbye. Goodbye. Look, this is getting ridiculous. You have to go now. Goodbye. And thank you for watching.